Good morning. Good morning, Antioch. It's been a long time coming. I'm so excited. I don't know what he's brought you through. I can only speak for myself. And God has saved me. He's brought me a mighty long way. It is so good to be in his presence and to be in the house of the Lord. Happy Mother's Day for all of you mothers out there.
Well, come on, give God a praise in this house. Are you grateful? Amen. Let me first say thank God for all of our beautiful mothers. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you once again for seeing another Mother's Day. Thank you for these beautiful women that are here today, God. Lord, we just ask that you would move in this service today. Have your way. Touch every mother, Lord God, that may be experiencing something, God, that they've not been able to share with anyone but you. I pray, God, that you would meet them at the point of their need here today. Bless the woman of God as she comes to share with us the word of God. Lord, I pray that we would be attentive to your word and we would hear what you are trying to say and convey through your servant today. Father, we thank you and we give you praise and ask God that your blessings would rest upon this service. In Jesus' name, amen. So we couldn't let this day pass without a small tribute from the men to the mothers. Amen? Amen. 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 getting back together. Sometimes life throws some challenges at us and we forget how good God is. And for every mother that's in this place today, grandmothers, aunties, cousin mothers, and the real mothers, we thank you. We thank you for your hard labor. We thank you for all the time you waited on us. And sometimes y'all pushed us into our destination. We say thank you. I remember one night I was sitting in my home. My family was already asleep. And my mind began to roam. I started to reminisce about where God had brought me from. I thought about how good he's been to me, even when I was doing wrong. I say, Lord, yes, I know. Yesterday, I was watching the news. I saw people dying in the street, and they had no food. No food. 
What gives me the right to complain about anything? When I thought times were tough, God blessed me with way more than enough. And I say, Lord, you I don't do nothing else. Nothing else. Let me humble myself. I'll humble myself. And take this moment out. I'll take this moment out. Just to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And if my life should end this day, my life should end this day Lord. No more blessing come my way. All I need is one breath. I need one breath. Just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. Thank you for my life. My life. Thank you for health. My health. I thank you for peace and the promise. You kept, Lord. For family and my friend. family and friends. For shelter and food. Shelter and food. I am so grateful that you really need. So good, Lord. For family and friends. Family and friends. For shelter and food. Shelter and food. I am so grateful that it's really been good. If I don't do nothing else, Lord, let me humble myself. Brought me from a mighty long way. And take this moment out. Put food on my table. Just to say thank you. And a roof over my head. It's my life. Gave me some brothers who I can share with. Gave me some members I can call my family. All I need is one breath. One breath. Just to say thank you. Lord, this is all you've done for us. Thank you. Two years we was away. Thank you. We cried many days. Thank you. You gave us peace of mind. Thank you. A place to call home. Thank you. I remember my mother. Thank you. I remember the things she told me. Oh, hold Thank on you. to your word. Everything will be Thank all right. Thank you. Everybody can see your work. Thank you. It's not about me, Lord. Thank you. I can just give you all the praise. Thank you. When I say thank you, thank you. I want to praise more and more, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to call out your name. Thank you. You provide a way out of the way. Thank you. You gave me a place to call my place of home. Thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. When you'll be my brother in the late time. Thank you. Thank you for my pastor. Thank you. I thank you for my dick and brothers. Thank you. I thank you for every woman here today, Lord. Thank you. If it wasn't for the mothers, where would we be? Thank you. Don't let society tell you what a woman is. Thank you. We see them right here today, Lord. Thank you. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Say thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Give me your home, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we can just stand and give reverence to the reading of the Word of God. And I was just reminded of back in my unsaved days, when I used to listen to a lot of hip-hop music, and uh, 
Probably the most conducive song that uh, Tupac Shakur ever made was probably a tribute to his mother called Dear Mama. He says, you are appreciated. So I just want to let you mothers know you are appreciated. We honor you. We love you. We celebrate you. We bless you. We praise God for you today. You are appreciated. Amen. We're going to be turning to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. And we're going to start at the fifth verse through the seventh verse. And then we'll jump down to verse 30 through 37. So that's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, and then 30 through 37, which reads, let me bring out the King James Version here. Okay. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Of the course of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Amen. And jump it down to verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how should this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Herein at the reading of the word. Oh, one more verse, excuse me. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, I love this verse, I'm going to say that again. For with God, all things, some things, not most things, all things are possible because nothing shall be impossible with God. Herein, if the reading of the word of God, let us receive the woman of God with a hearty amen. Everybody. I need all the mothers in here to stand up and thank God for all that he's done for you. Come on, come on. And I need somebody here, somebody here that's going through something right now that God is going to fix. children were growing didn't know how you were going to make it. You're not clapping for me. You're clapping for God. He deserves all our praise. Not just some of it. He deserves all of it. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. First of all, I want to say a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And not just those that actually conceive and gave birth, 
to someone. We're talking about stepmothers. We're talking about godmothers. We're talking about other women that's standing in the gap for somebody that don't have a mother right now. Amen. We celebrate you today. I want to thank Pastor Jones, the shepherd of this house, for allowing me to come before you today to preach this message. Thank his lovely wife for coming and greeting me this morning. Amen. I wish nothing but blessing to Pastor Wolf, Pastor Thomas, and all the other ministers, deacons, deaconess. I say thank you. To my family. Yeah, I'm a member here. To my Antioch family. I greet you today to friends and family and to those that are watching by way of video I say good morning let us pray dear Heavenly Father Lord, I come now as your humble servant, Lord. Lord, I come thanking you this day, this day that they call Mother's Day. Lord, I thank you for allowing me and showing favor in my life for me to be a mother. Lord, I ask that you bless all the mothers that are here. Bless them greatly, Lord. Lord, bless them. Bless them. Because Lord knows we go through some things. But if it wasn't for you, Lord, we never would have made it. Lord, we just thank you. We magnify your name. We give you glory, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just move Antoinette out of the way. Move me out the way. I don't even mind. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about you, God. I say a blessing on the shepherd of this house, Pastor Tom, uh, Pastor Jones and his wife. Lord, I ask that you just continue to give Pastor Jones what he needs. Lord, bless him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, that he may be able to continue to give a word to your people. I thank you, I love you, and I magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we celebrate Mother's Day, I can't help but think about my mother who's no longer here. But I'm so grateful that God allowed her to be my mother. Amen. She was a good mother. And like some, some of you, she was a single mother, raising us, working two jobs, doing what she needed to do to take care of her children. You know, many of you are doing the same thing. We as women, we go through a lot of things and we have to wear many hats. You know, the old song that says, bring bacon and fry it up in a pan. <laughs> yeah, we doing all that and some. We are doing all of that and some. We have to wear many hats. And you know, guys, I know it's not about you today. It's about the women. But you know, women, we just have that motherly instinct. You know, we know when something's wrong. We can tell it in their voice, what's going on with our children. 
You know, growing up, I can remember my mother telling me about things that her mother taught her. And then, as we began to have children, I remember her telling me some of the things I needed to do. You see, back then, we didn't have no baby book. Or if it was a baby book, we didn't know nothing about it because we couldn't afford it. <laughs> so they would literally sit down and teach the women what it is they need to do to care for that baby. We didn't worry about no baby shower. Mm-mm. Because we were just happy to be having a baby and the baby come in safe. You know, we didn't care about all that. And I'm not knocking today's generation, but today's generation, it's all about putting it out there. They have to have this gender reveal party. <laughs> then they have this uh, other baby shower. And I'm going, I ain't going to but one. Because <laughs> all of this is a little too much for me. <laughs> it's OK for them. But we didn't have all of that, and we didn't worry about all of that. We just went on what our mother taught us, and that was all we needed. Now, as we look at the scripture today, we see, and I would like for you all to go back and actually read the whole first chapter of Luke. Because, you know, we're not going to, we don't have time to read all the verses. But looking at the scripture, you see a man by the name of Zacharias that's in the temple praying, burning incense. And you see Gabriel, an angel of the Lord, approaches him and tells him that his wife, who is of older age, would give birth to a child. I can see, and I can understand why Zacharias kind of questioned him, because, I mean, the Bible don't say how old she is, but, you know, old to us, especially these young folks sometimes at 50. <laughs> So I'm going to just imagine that she was probably in her 60s. And because Zacharias did not believe what the angel said, God said, I'm going to shut your mouth. You will not have a voice until the day your son is born. Now, I thought that was really significant because a lot of times we're getting in the way. God already knows what he wants to do, but we get in the way. And sometimes God just needs to sit us to the side like Zacharias and say, just be quiet. I got this. But Zacharias... He didn't believe. Not only did he tell him that his wife was going to conceive, he told him, it will be a boy, and you will name him John. When Zacharias went home, his wife actually conceived thereafter. Now, the angel Gabriel goes to Mary and tells Mary that she's going to be with child. 
And Mary said, how can this be? I've never had a man. How can this be? But he went on further and said, God says it's so. You will have a son, and his name will be Jesus. Now, to Mary and Elizabeth, look at the text. It says, God showed favor in their life. Now, that word favor means you didn't have to do anything to get that. It's just something that God decides to do for you. He's got a reason. We don't know the reason, but he does. And so we just have to trust him. So we got three people now that kind of don't believe things started out. We got Zacharias. We got Elizabeth. We got Mary. All saying, how can this be? Now, as we go further, I'm going to talk about three things. Three things that I want you all to get. Number one, can somebody say one? One. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Number one. Don't question God. If God say it's so, it's so. He's God all by himself. He don't need Patrick over there. He don't need Brenda over there. He's God all by himself. You see, when you really look at this thing, I could kind of see where they were coming from. Because, you know, being a nurse, you know, they say a woman conceiving in her old age All right, I understand that, that that's kind of impossible. From a nursing standpoint, I get it that Elizabeth said, I mean that Mary said, she's a virgin. How am I going to do this? I get it. Because... Scientifically, it's not supposed to be. But you see, Zacharias, Elizabeth, and Mary were looking at things from an earthly standpoint. We can understand that. But they didn't realize that the God we serve, he works in the spiritual realm, and anything he says will come true. Amen. Now, I understand they had questions, because I would have had some questions too. You know, this day and time, we would have gave that angel Woo. We would have gave him some trouble. I mean, can you imagine this day and time somebody coming and telling you that you're going to have a child and a virgin? I can hear us now. I 
can hear us now with all the questions, because you know we women, we got questions. But I can hear us. So now, who, who you say it sent you? Okay, God, God sent you? Okay, word. Mm-hmm. And um, what he told you I'm going to have? Because, you know, I want a girl. You know, I want to put on hair bows and dress her up and all that kind of stuff. So tell him to make it a girl. I can hear us saying to the angel, is it going to hurt? Because, you know, I don't like no pain. And Eve messed us up in the garden. So I don't want no pain. And then finally, we would have asked this question in today's time. Now, what day you say this is going to happen? <laughs> because look now, if, if it's a Friday, it need to be Friday evening now because I got to go get my hair did now because I got to be cute for the pictures. <laughs> I mean, we would have gave that angel all kind of trouble. I can see the angel right now going back and say, choose somewhere else. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. I thank you. Celebrate and rejoice in someone else motherhood. Amen. You see, don't be mad at Katie over there that's got eight kids and she's on her ninth one. Don't be mad. Rejoice. Be glad. God has favored them. And guess what? If he did it for somebody else, he can do it for you. So don't block your blessing. So celebrate. You can see in this scripture that when Mary found out her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant, she immediately went to her. And it said the baby in her womb was jumping for joy. He knew what Mary had. He knew who Mary was going to conceive. He knew who Mary was going to give birth to. So you've got to celebrate somebody else. Finally, number three, number three. and I'm going to get on up out of here. Being a mother comes with good days, bad days, letdowns, accomplishments, angry days, sleepless days. Should I keep going? <laughs> Mothers have learned to fix it and move on. You know, when I was growing up and I had my kids, um, my mother told me, she said, when their babies are in your lap, you're okay. But when they groan, they in your heart. And I never quite understood what that meant. 
until I had my children. And you know, I can remember my son going off to college and how that felt because he wasn't in my eyesight. So you had to pray every day that he's with the right people. He's doing the right things. He's not getting into trouble. And now, as my baby prepares to leave me, I got even more. But I'm not going to worry. I'm going to pray about it, and I'm going to leave it there. Amen. Through our trials and tribulations, we've learned as mothers to do it, do the best we can. And like some of you, if you got mothers, they'll tell you, it was by the grace of God that I made it. Now, don't think that, you know, Elizabeth and Mary didn't have any trials and tribulations, any sadness or anything, any worry, because we already know that one year, while they were leaving the fest, festival of the Passover, that Jesus stayed behind. And his mom and, and dad were looking for him. And they went back and said, why would you worry us like this? He said, because I'm in my father's house doing his business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but as a mother, I can see that day that they were dragging Jesus. As a mother, I can empathize with her when they were beating Jesus. I can see her crying out with everything in her because her child was hanging. I can understand how she grabbed her stomach as they nailed him to the cross. I can understand how she hung her head as Jesus died. You know, God never told Mary or Elizabeth what the ending was going to be mm -hmm. for their child. He never told uh, Mary that her son was going to have to go through all that. Because if he had a, we would have tried to derail that. You know we would have. He didn't tell her. But as Jesus hung his head and died, He died, but early that third morning, yeah. he got up. Yeah. Can't you see Mary right now jumping for joy? He got up. 
with all power in his hand. So, if some of you that are here today does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you want to become a part of his family, we ask for you to come down. Give these deacons your hand and give your life to Jesus. Would there be one, anyone today, would there be one that says, as a mother, I need a little help? And what better help than Jesus? Is there one? There may be someone that's watching that does not know the Lord and Savior. And you want to become a part of his family. If you just say this prayer with me you will be accepted Heavenly Father I come to you today as a sinner Lord I know that I have sinned and I regret it Lord I try to repent Lord, I just ask that you be with me and guide me. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died on the cross. But on that third day, he rose. And now he's sitting at the right hand of our father. Accept me into your family. I thank you and I honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now if someone by internet that's viewing us pray that pray prayed that prayer you are accepted if you want to become a member or you need prayer you can call us at 407-365 5341. Or you can email us at info at Antioch dash MBC dot org. Again, mothers, enjoy your day. I love you. And guess what? God loves you too. Good morning, Antioch. Once again, it's your boy, Pastor Wolf, 
And I just want to give you a quick update. We are excited. We are coming up on the graduation time. For everyone that reached out to me or sent me an email and spent time with me on the phone, thank you so much. We got all the information and numbers we needed for the youth reentry. From here, just stay tuned for further announcements. Now, as far as the graduation is concerned, I want to remind you of three important deadlines. May 22nd, if there's any seniors attached to Antioch that are graduated, anybody that's graduated from college, anyone that has special accomplishments, I need it all by May 22nd. If you're given to adopt a senior, we need to collect all monies by May 27th. Everything is going on schedule as the previous couple of years. The only thing that's uh, different this year so far is the amount of money we've collected for adopt a senior at this point. So I'm just encouraging you all, we wanna be a blessing to our young people. If you can, please, I trust you. I know you'll show up and show out. Please give, just put adopt a senior in your giving and let's be a blessing to all our young people. Uh, finally, June 3rd, for those that are graduating from high school, your PBB Willie Moore scholarship applications need to be received so the judges can review them and be ready for June 5th. Once again, graduation is right after service on June 5th here in the sanctuary. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Good morning. What an awesome and powerful word. Thank you for joining us in our service today. There is a class for you. Adult Sunday School class are held on Sundays at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Beginners through high school Sunday School classes are held on Sundays at 12 p.m. via Zoom as well. Head to our church website for the link to join. Don't forget to join us this Wednesday for a Bible study via Zoom at 7 p.m. We also have youth Bible study via Instagram starting at 7 p.m. as well. Head to our website for the links to join in. Antioch family, thank you for your continued generosity through your tithes and offerings. It is greatly appreciated. There are a couple ways that you can give. You can give online at antioch-mbc.org or you can mail it to 311 East Broadway Street, Obito, Florida 32765. We want to say happy birthday to everyone who celebrated a birthday and happy anniversary to every couple celebrating an anniversary this past week. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel at AMBC Oviedo. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay prayed up. Have a blessed week.